Dr. Catherine Margaret Churchman is a lecturer in Asian Studies in the School of Languages and Cultures at Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. Although principally a historian specialising in the history of Southern China and Vietnam, she became interested in Hokkien whilst living in Taiwan in the mid-1990s. She decided in 2005 to concentrate on learning Penang Hokkien, specifically compiling a word list that eventually grew into a 280-page dictionary, which is still a work in progress. She has written two articles on the history of Penang Hokkien and its distinctive vocabulary, the eclectic nature of Penang Hokkien vocabulary, its historical background and implications for character writing, and Native Lexical Innovation in Penang Hokkien, Thinking Beyond Roja. Dr. Churchman studied Chinese and Dutch studies as an undergraduate in New Zealand and Taiwan before receiving her doctorate in Asian history from the Australian National University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Catherine Margaret Churchman. Um, uh, I'm Catherine Churchman from uh, Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand and um, I'm very, very honoured to have been asked to take part in this colloquium uh, for the centenary of the State Chinese Association of Penang. Um, and of course, uh, I was really hoping to be able to be there in person, but uh, like most people who've been wanting to travel. I've been disappointed this year. Um, so I've made a PowerPoint presentation for you and I'll speak along to that and, and you'll be able to watch the recording and I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, Just have to get it going. There we go. Um, so I've chosen the theme Made in Penang, and I have this uh, found this beautiful picture uh, by Sylvia Lee Go called Nyonya's Secret Recipe. And you can see she's uh, the Nyonya is cooking up all kinds of uh, beautiful things. And I think it makes a very good um, analogy for a Straits Chinese Hokkien. Uh, of Penang with its many different ingredients. So um, that's the theme of, of the talk is made in Penang. Um, and I'd like to dedicate this talk to, uh, to the memory of uh, Baba Johnny Chi, who um, I used to come and visit when, I'd, uh, when I was in Penang and he was very generous with his time. And uh, from conversations, I was able to learn a lot about the uh, uh, Straits Chinese Hokkien language and uh, it's been very helpful for my, he, he was very very helpful for my research so I was really hoping that I would get to see him again the last time I was at the State Chinese Penang Association. Um, uh, we sat out in the garden and we watched um, uh, a show and we talked uh, about all things Hokkien and then we went in to watch uh, uh, display of um, uh, of sarong and and uh, kebaya and so on. So uh, uh, yes, it's it's a great pity, and I I'll really miss uh, Baba Johnny. Um. So uh, moving on to my talk, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, Straits Chinese Hokkien. Um, first, as the basis for modern spoken Sinke Hokkien, um, and second, as a transplanted language, uh, third, as a mixed language, fourth, as an endangered language, uh, sorry, fourth, as an inventive language, and fifth, as an endangered language. Um, so we often hear this uh, term Penang Hokkien being used, actually. Um, I used to think when I started to learn Hokkien, there was just one kind of uh, Penang Hokkien, but uh, 
Now, of course, I soon picked up the fact that lots of people would say to me, oh, nobody uses that word or nobody uses this word. And I'd find that I was using a word from one of the two uh, main varieties of Penang Hokkien, and one is straight type Chinese Hokkien, and one is Sinkek Hokkien. Um, most people speak something somewhere in between on a continuum between these two varieties. Um, Straits Chinese uh, Hokkien is characterized by a, a large number of uh, loan words uh, from English and Malay, uh, some archaisms um, which aren't used, so older words that uh, were lost in Shinkate Hokkien. Um, it's also people say the accent is different, but I'm not really uh, so sure about that. I've never I, I'm sure native speakers can hear that very well, but as because I'm not a native speaker, I don't hear it as, as clearly as other people do. Um, the grammar is also uh, quite different from uh, Sinkat Hokkien in certain respects. Um, and as a result, it's quite hard for uh, speakers of other varieties of Hokkien, like people in Taiwan, uh, uh, Straits Chinese Hokkien is harder for them to understand because the grammar is different. There are certain um, words and expressions that are, um, uh, are simply not understood outside um, Penang and Perak and Kada. Um, as for Shinkai Hokkien, the more vocabulary is shared with other uh, Chinese languages, not just with Hokkien, but there's more vocabulary in common with other languages like Mandarin and, and Cantonese, even though it's pronounced differently, it comes from the same root. Um, and as a result, this is, makes it much closer to Taiwanese or Amoy Hokkien. Um, I myself have chosen to concentrate in the last uh, five years on the Straits Chinese Hokkien, so that I model um, my uh, speaking on people like uh, Baba Johnny Chi and on uh, uh, generally on, on Straits Chinese Hokkien speakers. I choose words that they would use, which is great fun when I go to Taiwan and people say, oh, I can understand what you're saying. I can understand what you're saying. And I, I kind of enjoy watching their eyes glaze over after about two minutes when I start popping dapi and, 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 um, and bun and these kinds of uh, Malay loanwords into uh, my conversation. I can't help it, that's just how I speak, but it really loses them after a while and then they have to switch into Mandarin to talk to me. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things I really would like to emphasize as well is that Straits Chinese Hokkien isn't a newcomer. It's not a new variety of Hokkien that developed after uh, Shinkat Hokkien uh, came to Penang. It's not a result of uh, a, a recent history of mixture. Um, these Malay and English loanwords and the way that Straits Chinese Hokkien speakers speak, um, it has a very long history. In fact, it's a longer history than other varieties of Hokkien in Penang. So, um, of course, when I say this, people are going to say, well, why is it so rojak when uh, uh, when it's got the longest history in Penang, they'll think that these loanwords are a recent thing. Uh, and then we'll, you'll get people who think that Sinkek Hokkien is pure Hokkien because it's not Rojak, and therefore because it's pure Hokkien, because it doesn't have so many uh, loanwords in it, then it must be an older variety. Um, or even worse, pure Hokkien is the one spoken in China. Um, and so I don't like any of those ways of thinking, so I, it's time for some myth busting around these, uh, these kinds of ways of thinking. So first of all, what is pure Hokkien? Well, actually from the very beginning, every variety of Hokkien uh, has certain things in common. And all varieties of Hokkien are composed of to start with. And this is the ones in China and the ones in Taiwan and the ones in the Philippines and elsewhere there. First of all, they're composed of what I call the pre-Chinese base. Now, this is the languages that were spoken in Fujian that don't exist anymore. Um, but they were spoken in, Hok in Fujian before people who spoke the language ancestral to Hokkien arrived there. Um, and these include words like ba and ka 
So ba and ka, these are not Chinese words at all. They're not related to other words in Chinese. Um, and I, I decided to bring Tang Taizong, the, the, the first emperor of the Tang along to tell us how he would have said uh, the word for meat and the word for foot. And he would have said it uh, like this. He would have said meat as nyo, and the word for foot, he would have said as gyak. At least that's how they reconstruct it. Um, and a mixture of strata as well. So you often hear the reason why I brought the, the Tang Emperor along is because people say that Hokkien is a Tang Dynasty language. Well, that's not actually true. Hokkien is made up of a mixture of different time uh, strata from different periods. So you can see this in words like ask, which is mui in ordinary Hokkien, but it also has the same character is read uh, with uh, the pronunciation bun. So you mui bun te. Um, and then you have o and hak. Those are two uh, readings of the same character for study. So you have o, o hok wa, and then you have hak sing, hak sing meaning a uh, student. Um, so these earlier, the, the two first terms, mui and o, they actually descend from a form of Chinese that was spoken in Fujian probably around 300 to 500 AD. We, not that they spoke like that, but these descend from those forms. Um, and the readings bun and hak, you'll find they're closer to the readings that you get in Korean, um, which is mun and hak as well. And that's uh, those date from the Tang Dynasty. So there's a lot of uh, words in Hokkien that predate the Tang Dynasty. Um, and if we ask Tang Taizong how to say those, he would say them Wun and Xiao. So again, not quite the same as Hokkien or Korean or um, at all. So actually, there's no real pure Hokkien. So even right from the very start, when people started talking about Hokkien, it was already, already mixed with these three different vocabulary strata. So next time somebody talks to you about it being pure, you can, uh, you can tell them that. Um, so uh, there's another um, thing to talk about is which which is the the correct Hokkien if people talk about pure Hokkien or correct Hokkien. So here's a map of the uh, place where uh, the majority of Hokkien speakers in Southeast Asia, uh, their ancestors come from. Um, and of course, the the big five surnames in, in Penang, they mainly come from this area, the Haiding area down here, or Samdo as it used to be called. Um, but you get people from other areas as well, like Jiangju and Zhuanju. Uh, and of course, later on, the biggest um, uh, center of population uh, in the 19th century was on this island here, which is, uh, and then that became uh, the city of Xiamen or Amoy. And that became the, the uh, kind of Hokkien on which a lot of um, dictionaries and so on, uh, and uh, missionary uh, translations of the Bible and so on were based on, on this Amoy variety. But it's quite different from the Samdo variety. So let's have a look at, uh, at that now. Um, so I decided to pick three things that are very common in Penang, chopsticks and incense, joysticks and a bowl of rice. And in Amoy, the word for these things is hiu, di, and bung. In Zhuanju, it's hiu, di, and bung. In Jiangju, it's hiu, di, and bui. And in Samdo, just move myself out of the way there. In Samdo, it's hiu, du, and bui. And that Samdo Hokkien, that is the uh, what we can call the ancestral variety of both kinds of Hokkien in, in Penang. Even though people came from different places, uh, they ended up speaking like this. Um, and here we have uh, the earliest written records of, of what Penang Hokkien or Hokkien in Penang sounded like. So we have uh, a list of, it's actually a list of gangster slang from a typescript uh, called the Penang Riots Inquiry, um, and it dates from 1867. It had just been a, a very 
uh, uh, a lot of uh, political instability and rioting in Penang, and this was the government report on it. And this has certain uh, words uh, defined. So you have hiao or hiao, uh, a joss or incense stick, you have du for chopsticks, and you have jiapui, they've written buin because they can't say that, that, that nasalized vowel jiapui. You actually have these forms there all the way back in 1867. Of course, when people are writing in Chinese at this time, you can't really tell what it sounds like, but here's the first, um, first evidence of what Penang Hokkien sounded like or back in 1867. Um, so if we look at the uh, census, of the uh, of Penang, this is the Strait Settlement Census. This is actually the, the number of people in Penang State. Straits born Chinese made up 10,477 of, of the population in 1881, and the Hokkien's uh, made up 16,568. And now these both of these people would have spoken uh, different types of Hokkien, um, and in the uh, 1891, the Straits born have gone up by 6,000, but the Hokkien have gone up by about 8,000. So, um, but <clears throat> because the Straits born, that style of Chinese, the Samdo pronunciation of Chinese was already there. And uh, by 1867, anyone who came, at least by 1867, anyone who came after this time, gradually as they came from uh, China, they would assimilate and pick up the type of Hokkien that was already there. You can see there were lots of Cantonese and Teochews as well, but they all ended up speaking more or less the same type of Hokkien. So we get rid of all of these hiu and du and bung, and we end up with hiao, or a special Penang pronunciation, hiao, du, and bui. So what happened was that Sinkek Hokkien is the result of Sinkek speakers trying to emulate the language of the Straits Chinese. So they picked up the pronunciation that was already there. They came from all of those different areas. Lots of people who said bung and di and du, and they all ended up saying du and bui. Almost all of them. You can still hear those other pronunciations in some places. So uh, now what I'll talk about is uh, why it was that the Straits Chinese were borrowing uh, these Malay words. Of course, one of the reasons is that they needed to describe things that didn't exist in China. When people came down uh, to the Malay Peninsula, there were certain things there that they had never seen before. And these included plants and animals, these included local foods and material culture, um, aspects of government law and administration. At this time, in the 1700s, 1800s, the Qing government had a very different administrative system from uh, the British colonial uh, powers. Um, and uh, so a lot of these new th things were new to um, uh, people who turned up in Penang. And also the customs and culture of other ethnic groups. And sometimes they would see other ethnic groups in places like Amoy because it was quite a cosmopolitan uh, city people would be coming and going. Um, but generally the earliest Hokkien speakers who came to Penang, they lacked many of these words and they the speakers had to borrow and invent new terms. So if somebody was using a word already, they would borrow it or they would invent new terms for it. And so you have words for various plants and animals that didn't exist in China. So this one uh, is interesting because it's picked up a quite a different pronunciation as well. Lun ban lan or, or pandanus leaf. Uh, you have asam, you have lu lian, and this one's made it, its way back into China. Some of the loan words did. And you have the mo, uh, mo sang, the, the, the civet. Now actually civets do exist uh, in, in Guangdong, but they don't exist in Fujian. And that's probably why they picked up this word um, because the first place that Hokkien speakers saw a civet was in, in, in Penang or in, in, uh, uh, in Malaya. Yeah. So um, another thing was local foods and material culture. So things like atap making, uh, ha and making houses out of atap as well. Batik as well, these things de definitely didn't exist in China. 
um, Dodoi uh, and Sambay. Now these two are really interesting because they show something else about uh, the Penang Straits Chinese uh, is that they tended to borrow certain types of Malay words. So what is Malay when we just say Malay? Actually, we're meaning quite a few different things. Um, and it's not Bahasa Malaysia as it exists nowadays. Um, in fact, Penang Straits Chinese Hokkien tends to emulate Kadahan pronunciation of Malay. You can see that you, uh, but sometimes there are Kadahan words or, or Bahasa Tanjong words that are different, but they don't follow those. So that's quite an interesting feature. Um, so for example, uh, there's this article by A.W. Hamilton, the famous uh, scholar of, of, of Malay and Malay dialects and Malay folklore. Um, and in 1922, he wrote an article called Penang Malay. Um, and it contains an awful lot of, of different words, but also some of the different types of pronunciation that um, uh, uh, were used up in Kedah and up in, in Penang as well. And one of the things he notices, notes that, is that a final L is often pronounced as an I. It's vocalized in, in Kedah pronunciation and in the pronunciation of Bahasa Tanjong. So you have words like agai. And actually this one's interesting because it's it's not originally wasn't even Malay, it was from akal, which is an Arabic word borrowed into Malay, changed in Kadahan, then borrowed into uh, into into Hokkien. Uh, misui, also Bisul in Bahasa Malaysia, Bisui in Bahasa um, uh, in the Kadahan uh, dialect, and then same with Botoi. Botoi originally from English bottle becomes botol, botoi in, in, in Hokkien, and dodoi as well. So those two sambai and dodoi, they're also um, examples of that. Um, but what I found quite interesting about uh, Hamilton's Penang Malay uh, article is that it contains a lot of words that actually that never were picked up. And sometimes I've shown people from Penang uh, that article and they haven't understood the words in there at all. So some of these words like agat, agat meaning uh, to guess or estimate, uh, very widely used in Penang. Um, Hamilton has the word gamak for that, but actually Penang Straits Sokin tends to be closer in this case to Baba Malay and Bahasa Malaysia. Um, Longgao from Longgang, also a drain, he said, Hamilton says it was parit, in, in Penang, which is, I've never heard. And layu to fade, also very commonly used in Straits Chinese Hokkien, mala in, uh, uh, in Penang Malay. Uh, so um, I'll come back to that in, in a minute. Um, uh, first, we'll then talk about these, uh, some other words for government and law and administration. One of them is mata. So why is it that, that Penang uses this word mata? Um, uh, for police. So that's from mata mata, very commonly known, uh, meaning the eyes. It's an old word for police. Of course, Malay doesn't have this, uses the word police now. So, so Straits Chinese Hokkien has become a museum of old Malay words. Uh, jamban is another one where people say tandas now. Um, I thought the Malay word for toilet was jamban and I got laughed at in Kuala Lumpur. Um, Gombange, a word for the government. This is from the word company, uh, or it could be the Dutch compagnie as well. It kind of sounds more similar to that. Um, but this was the Straits Chinese word for, for the government. Um, and it's not to say that uh, in China, they didn't have something slightly similar to a police or a, a local, uh, local militia, and that they certainly had a government. Um, but these words, what they, what people saw in Penang was sufficiently different enough uh, to, uh, from what they had been experienced, experienced in China, that they borrowed new words for another word is bangsa, for different races or ethnic groups. I chose these three words specifically. Um, this one's actually from Sanskrit originally, ramsa, and then becomes bangsa. Um, 
And of course, you would have had different ethnic groups turning up in Amoy as well. But uh, the idea of an ethnic group or an ethnic grouping is much, much more obvious um, if you live in Penang, where there are several different races living together. So it was the Malay word that became uh, the uh, default Hokkien word for it. And there's a reason for this. So, and one of them is that some of these words that exist now in Hokkien from China did not exist back uh, at the time when the uh, ancestors of today's Straits Chinese were coming to Penang. Um, so you have a dictionary of a Moy dialect uh, by Castes Douglas, 1873, but um, uh, there's a supplement written by, um, I can't remember his first name, Barclay, uh, in 1923, and it added 271 new pages of words, about 47% uh, of, of the, the Hokkien vocabulary in was, so it's an increase of 47% over the uh, original um, a dictionary by Barclay. So Hokkien was changing a lot over the period uh, in the 1880s to the 1920s. It was changing an awful lot. There were lots of new things coming into China, new government, new technologies, and uh, new concepts. Um, I found this book in uh, an antique shop in Chulia Street a few years back at the bottom of a box and it was a really useful book uh, written in 1913 Chinese new terms and expressions with English translation introduction and notes now this was um uh, Evan Morgan had collected all the different new terms he'd seen that turn up in newspapers and books uh, from the last 15 years so they were things that had come in roundabout in the, the late 1890s and early 1900s. And this was very useful uh, for me when I was looking at the kinds of words that don't exist in, they don't have a Chinese form in Straits Chinese Hokkien. So the Chinese Hokkien words for these things, these were borrowed from Japanese actually in the period 1890 to 1910. So the word for race, nationality and people, in, in, in Taiwanese, first used in Chinese in 1889 in a Chinese book, comes from a Japanese word, minzoku, which ultimately came from a Chinese, uh, two Chinese characters in the past, but the Japanese put it together to mean nationality, tribal people. Government, why do people say gongbange? Because government was a new word as well. Jinghu was first used in 1894, uh, Japanese seifu, uh, to police or to be police, gingtap, uh, first used in 1889, and from the Japanese Keisatsu. So all of those people who were there in 1881, um, 1891, they wouldn't have known these words to start with. So of course they were going to use the Malay and English words uh, back then. So actually these words here are the new words and, uh, and Straits Chinese Hokkien has the older words. So, um, but how about these words like Batu and Jali, and, and Lui, well, <laughs> from which actually comes from Dutch Duit, meaning a copper coin. There's a, a East India Company coin there. Now we can't say that people in China didn't have fingers or didn't know about stones or money. So there must be another explanation here. And there is. Um, so the explanation, perhaps one of the explanations for Lui as well is that, that Ji, the older, uh, Hokkien Chinese word referred to this kind of coin with a hole in the middle and if you saw ones without holes in the middle then you named them after the Dutch ones that you saw do it and hence Louis as meaning uh, money. Um, so the reason why you have all of those extra words is because Penang Hokkien, Straits Chinese Hokkien has been a mixed language. Now there's a lot of evidence to show that Penang Straits Chinese they've been bilingual or trilingual in Hokkien, Malay and English for a very very long time. Um, and sometimes as a result of this, they'd lose Hokkien words and replace them with English or Malay. And I say Malay there with that wider meaning of Malay. So in Malacca and Singapore, this process eventually created Baba Malay where the Hokkien words were lost altogether and all you had was the Hokkien structure, a uh, sentence structure. In Penang, this process ended up creating Straits Chinese Hokkien. I think it was kind of reversed by all of the Sinkat Hokkien coming and uh, as well, 
but uh, at some time, uh, it is quite likely that uh, that, or not likely that, you have references to the high um, um, that that people who lived in Penang in the 19th century, the ancestors of the Straits Chinese, spoke a lot, uh, put a lot of Malay words into their Hokkien. So it says the Babas, especially those in Malacca, but this is this book actually refers to all, um, all of the Straits settlement, Penang included, so interlard their conversation with Malay words and sentences that it is difficult to say sometimes whether they are speaking Chinese or Malay. Um, and then, uh, William Girdleston Shellebel, writing about Baba Malay, calls it the business language of Singapore, Hokkien, and the Federated Malay States. So this would explain why some of those words that are in common with Baba Malay and Bahasa Malaysia, they came into uh, a Straits Chinese Hokkien rather than the local Bahasa Tanjong words, because it was uh, a language that was used between uh, the Straits settlements. Um, in the fact that it's the mother tongue of the majority of Chinese women and children in the Strait settlements. Now this is quite interesting. So they're saying that Baba Malay actually more people spoke it uh, in the Strait settlements. Of course, this is probably to do with Malacca in this case, uh, because the article is about Malacca. Um, but anyway, you can see that that um, uh, Malay or a kind of Malay was rather widely spoken back uh, in in that period. Um, and you can see also the popularity of, of uh, Chan Kim Bun, uh, his translations of Chinese novels into Baba Malay were extremely popular in Penang. And a writer from uh, Perak here says, it's a work that should be in every Chinese home. Uh, if, if, if it should be in every Chinese home, that suggests that a lot of Chinese homes in the Strait settlements were um, proficient speakers of some kind of Malay in addition to Hokkien. Um, and you can see here we've got a, a, a letter from in, uh, in Batu Gantong's translation of Samgok or the Three Kingdoms from someone in Penang dated 9th of November uh, 1892 and it's all in Malay. So and it's what's interesting is that it's in Malay as spelt in uh, a more something closer to uh, Bahasa Malaysia, actually. Uh, not, it's not spelt like uh, Kedahan Malay, which is also quite interesting. Um, and as a result, this high levels of these high levels of bilingualism, they resulted in uh, all these words like Dapi, Balu, Suka, Mana, Dolong, Bun, and Bula, and Pasai. These words being in, uh, ingrained in the vocabulary of Straits Chinese Hokkien. So these aren't really, these aren't words that get borrowed to, from one language to another, like, like the words for plants and animals. Uh, these tend to be borrowed only when two languages are in long-term close contact with each other and there's uh, widespread bilingualism. This happens as well now in Hokkien with people who speak English a lot. So you'll hear them saying, uh, before wa wa um, because, uh, be because uh, like they'll, they'll start sentences like that. This is tends to be when languages are mixing like this, it tends to be because there's high levels of bilingualism. So that's how these words got into uh, Penang Straits, Chinese Hokkien. And then, then of course, they ended up in the, the speech of the Sinkak as well. Not as many as exist in Straits, Chinese Hokkien. Pasai tends not to be used as much. Um, and uh, um, and Balu is also used slightly differently in Straits Chinese Hokkien from uh, how it's used in um, uh, in in Sinkang Hokkien. So, uh, but mostly uh, all speakers of Penang, Penang Hokkien will use words like suka and dabi and so on. Yeah. It's it's quite widespread and it comes from the Straits Chinese variety. The Sinkang have have emulated it. Um, the last thing uh, I'd like to talk about is the inventiveness of, of, of Straits Chinese Hokkien. So quite often uh, people will think about uh, a language with many, many borrowed words is that it can't make words for itself. This is definitely not true as far as Straits Chinese Hokkien goes. So um, you have uh, 
words like Juan Bing Lang are words to distinguish the local born Chinese, uh, the straits born Chinese from the Chinese uh, from the Sinkak. It's, uh, it's a completely original uh, straits Chinese word that doesn't exist outside um, uh, back in um, uh, back in China. Huanaam, a word for a mosque. So Huan actually just meant foreign or um, uh, not Chinese uh, back in, in in the 19th century. Um, but quite often, where people would, wherever people would go, the local majority uh, foreigners or locals would end up being called Huana. Uh, in Thailand, Huana tends to to mean um, Thais. In the Philippines, it means Tagalogs. Uh, in, in Malaysia, it means Malay. So Huanaam is a mosque. It's the mosque that the locals uh, or go to, uh, or the, the, the temple, sorry, the Am that the locals go to. And you have the word Jipwan as well like from Masuk Malayu. So some of these words are based on, on maybe based on Malay uh, models, Masuk and Malayu, but they end up as, as distinct Hokkien terms. Jahong is another one of those. From, from Makan Angin. Um, Ji Ong Tu, Ji, sorry, Ji Ong Tu, the governor's house, the second king's house. That word certainly doesn't exist in, in, in China either because there's not a second king. Um, but uh, that's made from completely from Hokkien elements, but only really understood in the straight settlements. And then you have wonderful words like Bua Deng De, Bua Deng De meaning, uh, what now often gets referred to as a kabaya, but the Straits Chinese came up with an original Hokkien word uh, for that garment. Uh, so um, then you have hybrid vocabulary like atatsu and asampue and <laughs> batu, uh, batu lo. And sorry if my accent is a bit off, and manek e, e, mane e, sorry, and gaopandang. That's the only thing I could find out when I, <laughs> I looked up pandang, don't cut your nails at night. And uh, la tokong, these ones where I've put it in green, you have your native Hokkien element there, uh, but uh, it's attached to a, um, a Malay or Malay derived word. So that's really uh, unique to Penang, that style of, uh, of, of compound words. Um, finally, you have words like uh, lumpang, delat, mamasak, buai, and these sorts of things. These come from come from uh, Malay or local Malay as well. But one thing to think is these, we don't call um, French words in English corrupted or mispronounced. And we shouldn't really say it about them. Um, about the Malay loans in Straits Chinese Hokkien either. It's quite natural that people will pronounce words according to their own linguistic habits. And uh, English people have done this with French. And of course, uh, uh, Straits Chinese Hokkien have done it with Malay as well. So, okay, the pronunciation is different, but if we call them mispronounced, then you're assuming that you have to pronounce them exactly as they are in Malay, but they're not Malay words anymore. They're from Malay, but they became straight Chinese Hokkien words. Um, the last thing I'd like to say about is about the endangered language. So the language of straight Chinese in Penang has been pulled in several different directions. And one is uh, the Malacca Baba culture, the very well known um, Baba Malay culture. Um, and this encourages people because there's lots of books written about it and lots of record, re records of the language. Um, people tend to start to use Baba Malay words instead of instead of Hokkien words when they want to talk about the uh, Straits Chinese culture in Penang. So um, also the state sponsored cultures like the Chinese and Malay culture. Well, so when we're talking about Chinese, we're talking about education in Mandarin. When we're talking about Malay, in this case, we're talking about Bahasa Malaysia. So people will want to alter their um, their speech and say, oh, botoi, we, maybe we should actually be saying botol because that's proper Malay. And that's ignoring the, uh, the fact that it didn't come from uh, Bahasa Malaysia anyway. Bahasa Malaysia didn't exist when this word was borrowed, that it was from Kadahan. Um, the dominance of media in other languages, you're not going to see very much on TV. 
uh, or hear very much on the radio that's spoken in Straits Chinese Hokkien. Um, and some of this has also led to people to be self-deprecating. They look at down on their own language because it's mixed uh, and they don't want to speak it as much or they will correct themselves to start speaking, saying things in English or saying it in Malay or in Mandarin or in Baba Malay uh, or in Sinkek style Hokkien. But um, uh, there's nothing wrong with mixed languages. Mixed languages are very normal. English is a a uh, very mixed language. Even the word language isn't originally an English word, but it became an English word. Um, so here's the question. If these things are so important to Penang Straits Chinese, the Hua Deng Dei, the Gam Ting, the Manek Ye, and I forgot the word for this one, I'm, I'm very ashamed of myself, and the Asam Laksa, these things, material culture is important, then why is the language being neglected? Uh, I guess the, these things are easier to hand on as inheritance, material things. Language is something that you have to learn and make an effort to, uh, uh, an effort to, to pass on. Um, so uh, because of this, it's really important to record uh, Penang Straits Chinese Hokkien usages and words and expressions and idioms and so on. And then there's already some, um, very good works that have been done on this topic. A particular mention again to, to Baba Johnny Chi's tapestry, tapestry of Baba Poetry. Um, Raymond Kwok also has uh, written a couple of uh, books that contain words and expressions uh, in both uh, with Hokkien and the Malay element in, in, uh, in, in, in Penang Straits, Chinese Hokkien. And um, uh, Mr. Cha from the Kugongsi, he's also, um, uh, his book has a, a, an appendix with lots of the uh, words that are used in, in Straits Chinese Hokkien, the Malay words. Yeah. And there's also academic studies done by Lim Bing Sun and uh, other authors. So these are very uh, important works, but there's something missing there. One of them is that, that um, uh, if these works were the only things to survive of Penang Straits Chinese Hokkien, we wouldn't be able to tell, uh, apart from uh, the tapestry of Baba poetry, which has sound recordings, we wouldn't be able to tell what the language really sounded like uh, or what it sounds like. So um, recording sound, the middle point here, is really, really crucial because all of these Malay loan words uh, and even English loanwords, they pick up tones and a special accent in Penang Straits Chinese Hokkien. So it's really, really important to record stories in their original Hokkien, uh, record older people speaking about, uh, about thing, e everyday life uh, in original Hokkien. And this will give people something that they can, if they become interested in it, they can start listening to it, acts as a kind of media for them, and they can learn words for it and learn expressions and learn uh, correct Straits Chinese pronunciation from it. Um, and yeah, being more proud of the language as well, it's not just a rojak mix of, uh, of, of Hokkien and Malay and English, it's a testament to the long history and the inventiveness and cosmopolitanism of Straits Chinese in, in Penang. So, and of course the other thing to do is if you ever get the chance to speak Penang Straits Chinese Hokkien to your children and grandchildren and that's the best way of all of ensuring that uh, its inheritance passes on. So um, I'll be around for questions afterwards, but for, for now, uh, Gamsha for listening.